Hey everybody, c here and welcome to Dopamine, the show that is like these birds outside. Pretty adorable at first and uh, they just keep yapping and kind of ruin everything. <laughs> Today on the show I wanted to talk about the Myers-Briggs inferior functions, which is basically, I'm kind of labeling it as your kryptonite. What is your inferior superpower or the thing that is basically your weakness, essentially? Uh, what kind of gets under your skin as each personality type, there are uh, these things called shadow personalities that a lot of people talk about where we kind of become the worst parts of our opposite type. So if you're an INFP, you end up becoming like an ESFJ and just kind of be very emotional um, and uh, people focused in a way that's not healthy for you. So we're going to basically break that down and talk about all of those Um all of those things, um, because right now, uh, I, I just have been going through it and I thought it would be an interesting thing to kind of break down and talk about. So without further ado, let's kick out the intro and do this thing. Drums, Okay. Oh, I screwed up the video thing again. God. <laughs> Every time I... So I, I have it in OBS where I click the intro button, which is basically a transition, and then it goes back to the last button I hit, uh, which kind of messes me up. But uh, anyway, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of... It, this, this episode involved a bit of research, so I'm going to be kind of looking away uh looking away from the camera a bit uh if you're watching the video version so just kind of a heads up it's going to be a little bit awkward <laughs> um but yeah i have kind of a list of things uh, there are some types that i know a little bit more than others so if you have some additional information on these types uh absolutely please sound off in the comments below um this is meant as a way to uh, again kind of to iterate what Myers-Briggs is for people. It's it's sort of an intellectual astrology almost. <laughs> I don't want to discredit it by calling it that, but it's but what I mean by that is it's a way to kind of prompt you and and kind of learn more about your personality type, learn how to develop and grow. It's not a means of saying I am like this or I'm like that, but in other ways there are very solid foundations for who you are and what your type is. But there are different phases of life and different phases of development. And sometimes to try to learn your personality type, um, you can look at the inferior function, look at how you react to stress, intense stress specifically. And, you know, from there, be able to discern, uh, um, you know, how it affects you and, and, and be able to figure out your type based on that. So I'm going to try to bundle these into couples because uh, two types together. So usually the N type and the S type of the same other values uh, have the same inferior function. So for example, INTP and ISTP are FE inferior types. So those are their, their main weaknesses and they have the same dominant strengths as well. So and usually the difference between S and N types are the two functions in the middle. Uh, so for ISTP and INTP, INTP's two functions in the middle are, um, uh, what is it? Um, NE and SI, whereas with it's the opposite for STP types, ISPT, I ISTP, ugh. <laughs> it's uh, SI and NI, or SE and NI are theirs. But anyway, point being, I wanted to get into talking about some of these types. So let's start with the INTP, ISTP pair. So, um, so what happens, and it's funny because I wanted to start with them because this is obviously the type that I know the best. I'm an INTP. I know how I react to stresses. Um, one of the things that I react to is when things get in my way, basically, or I get interrupted by something. So I get really annoyed by the birds outside. <laughs> I'm like, stop it. I just want to record a show. You're being a pain in the butt. Um, I get really annoyed, uh, you know, just a few moments ago before recording this, um, my computer updated and my sound drivers were lost. And I was just so frustrated by that. I was like, I just want to record. I just have things I need to do. Why is this in my way? Um, and it kind of, kind of comes out everything comes out externally for FE types and you, because we're not, we're not good at processing emotions internally. Uh, and if we try to process emotions internally, our introverted thinking, our dominant function takes over and kind of convinces us that 
uh, uh, you know, our feelings are useless. Like it doesn't make sense that we shouldn't use them. Um, but really what we need to do is find ways to express our emotions in a healthy way. So I'm going to read some of this description that I read. And some of these descriptions I got from a Tumblr site, um, a Tumblr page that I thought was pretty spot on. Uh, some are more robust than others. And uh, I'm going to be more brief depending on how much I know a type or not. So INTP, ISTP, uh, their inferior is FE with the dominant of TI, introverted thinking, inferior extroverted feeling. So they uh, get unwilling, unwilling, unwittingly caught up in interpersonal conflicts, feeling out of place and insecure or awkward in social situations uh, under stress. They, they feel pressured um, to express their preferences or loyalties to uh, an emotional sentiment, uh, in emotional or sentimental terms, having to deal with people who seem strongly emotional or very demanding, feeling controlled, manipulated by others, communicating with people who are perceived to hold biased opinions or not caring about facts are things that stress them out including not having time for solid uh, not having time for solitude stresses them out pursuing personal um, interests and activities or getting you know someone getting in the way of those things rather um, feeling pressured to make decisions uh, or choices without enough time to properly you know work out factual analysis having to adhere to seemingly arbitrary rules or restrictions having their personal space or personal responsibilities taken over by others without warning or consultation, being treated unfairly, being unheard or unvalued, undervalued, being excluded from important decision-making dis discussions, having to rely on people who are less skilled, competent, uh, tight deadlines, or onerous supervision, time-wasting busy work, feeling pressure to extrovert too much. Um, they're most stressed by introduce, intruding or in personal space or disruptions, Creativity and critical thinking is blocked uh, as being in the moment is vital for INTP or ISTP types. Results in emotional outbursts. They become uneasy. They become edgy. Um, they may stop seeking novelty and retreat to their familiar and kind of get into that cognitive loop. Um, they lack uh, the, any kind of lack of autonomy is a stressful because we value our independence. Illogical people and controlling people also cause stress. So, and lack of affirmation for efforts also causes stress. Um, so the usually clear boundary between self and others becomes blurred as they take in too much information from other people. Easily, they're easily overwhelmed by emotions and then unable to stop themselves from expressing their own inner turmoil outwardly. Sometimes that comes out whiny too. They, they might become uncharacteristically sociable and outgoing, become inappropriate or obnoxious in social situations. They'll lose their calm demeanor and snap or whine at others. And they cannot see situations clearly and become very messy, distracted, or confused in their thoughts, resulting in less coherent and even forgetful actions. This can prompt them to emphasize detachment or anal analysis to an even greater extreme as overcompensation, sometimes becoming obsessive and demanding about proving some insignificant detail or solving an impossible problem or continuing <laughs> debates, discussions, arguments when others no longer wish to. As these behaviors produce for further hardship, they might be they might try to withdraw from social life to battle urges to act out, and they become hypersensitive to the opinions of others, misinterpreting innocuous actions as signs of dislike, disapproval, and rejection, which may in turn make them even more desperate for affirmation and validation. They tend to lose control over self-expression, either finding it difficult to express ideas clearly or expressing too much and becoming harsh, needy, or even violent when extremely overwhelmed. And what's interesting about INTPs or ISTPs is, is that, or really about any type, is that that suppression of the inferior based on the, the dominance of their dominant type uh, tends to, you know, the FE is always going to be trying to come to the surface. The inferior is always going to try to be a part of your life. But because it's more of a subconscious process, it's something that we have to like kind of nurture a little bit in our lives. Uh, you know, in, in INTP and ISTP types, for example, we need to use some of our extroverted feeling more. We need to stop relying on our introverted thinking to uh, to cover our emotions. Uh, and we need to find ways to healthily express our emotions externally, to provide affirmations to other people, say thank you, uh, you know, uh, look for people who are supportive in our lives and, um, you know, not look at emotions as a crutch for other people. And, you know, have respect for people and everyone's uh, opposing values because INTPs and ISTPs tend to think like our way of thinking is the only way of thinking. And uh, that's a problem. There are other people in their life, in our lives. 
So in INTPs, there's basically a statement that I, I've come up for every type. An INTP statement would be, why would anyone, or why won't anyone leave me alone? <laughs> it's a very whiny kind of statement. And then ISTPs tend to kind of ignore their emotions for a while. Same thing for INTPs, but their statement is more of a, everything is fine. And just kind of pretend everything's okay. Uh, so the next group I'm going to turn to is INTJ and IS, uh, INFJ. And those two types are, um, this one's going to be a little shorter, but those two types are uh, intuitive leaders. They lead with an introverted intuition. Uh, they have very specific focuses. They, they like a very specific thing. They have very, um, very keen instincts and intuitions when it comes to people or situations that they're very confident in. So um, they're extra or their rather their inferior function is extroverted sensing um which is usually responsible for kind of just following what everyone else is doing or uh, taking the external world into account and again this is a subconscious process so it's something that is happening under the surface without anyone realizing it so intjs um you know their statement would be it's more effective to just be like everyone else a good example is the girl in 10 Days I Hate About You, 10, 10 Things I Hate About You, um, when she's at the party and she's under uh, intense stress, she's an INTJ, and, you know, she's not being heard, she's not being respected, she's not being listened to, um, so she's just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to be like everyone else, and it's usually an expression or their interpretation of everyone else, so it often becomes extreme, it often becomes, you know, she was dancing on the table and, like, starting to, like, throw her clothes around and stuff, so that's what the INTJ, or at least her perception of the, her interpretation as an INTJ, uh, thinks that the rest of the world is like, and, you know, puts themselves in an SE situation where they're just being careless and carefree, um, perhaps promiscuous or taking in, you know, too much, uh, uh, food or physical things, taking on external physical things. Um, uh, so for... INTJs, that statement would be, it's more effective to just be like everyone else, like I just said. And then INFJs, they are most stressed when interrupted. They most stressed when misunder, um, with a misunderstanding with a loved one and harmony is disturbed. Um, in the same way that with INTJs, they are more focused on when their knowledge and information is disturbed or their ability to access more information is disturbed. Um, they lash out with uncontrollable risky behavior and seeks out, uh, he seeks out of body mindless and careless experiences to just not feel anything because they're intuitive types. They're taking in information constantly. So it makes sense that the opposite would be kind of seeking more of a numbing feeling to stop all emotion from coming in. Um, careless experience, um, so they seek out body mindless and careless experiences and then feels low self-worth for indulging in said behavior. Um, so it's, it's really like this roller coaster of like, let's be carefree and ridiculous. And then everything drops and plummets. And then, um, uh, for INFJs, they're more focused on harmony and people. Whereas INTJs are a little bit more on focused on external information and like the scientific method and facts and such. Uh, so, for INFJs, if that harmony is disturbed, then they get really stressed out when people are are not following them. They're not understanding where they come from and they have to explain too much. It becomes really stressful for them. So that's why INFJs tend to just kick people out of the world uh, if they don't really fit in. And INTJs kind of do the same thing, but they're a little bit more uh, information and systems focused. It's it's more about compliance than it is about harmony. Uh, so it's kind of this kind of the same in some ways, but different in others. Um, the next set is ISFP and INFP. So INFPs are, uh, you can think of uh, Frodo Baggins from Lord of the Rings. He just a very internal, uh, you, if you watch that movie again, which if you have 17 hours of your life, you can watch it again. <laughs> uh, you, you'll notice that uh, Frodo is a very internal feeler. So he's there's a lot of stuff going on around him and he just the camera is very focused on him just stopping and processing it and he's very sure of those feelings um, but it's also a lot of very intense emotion that is going on you know INFPs and ISFPs can go to their introverted dominant feelers and um, their their inferior is extroverted thinking or TE so when they become very stressed they they become stressed um, when they fear losing a person or a relationship 
in any kind of way. Um, they start acting out of character and blurting out um, firm accusations. They become very factual. They become very aggressively critical. Uh, they use cynicism and sarcasm and a lack of authenticity from someone creates further stress because FI, their dominant function, is very f focused on authenticity and being very sure of yourself. And uh, introverted feelers are very sensitive to that, to someone just being something they're not or trying to do too much of what the rest of the world is doing. Uh, it's kind of like TI dominants who are very focused on independence, but it's more about feeling than it is about thinking and logic. Um, so yeah, the, the lack of authenticity from someone creates further stress and obsessive about fixing problems and they can be very direct and straightforward. Um, the, the dude in the notebook, I forget his name, but there's an example on YouTube of, if you look up INFP, uh, stress or INFP TE, uh, you'll be able to find an example of him expressing to her, his frustrations as she starts to say that she needs to go back to her, uh, to her, to her fiance and all that stuff. And he's just like, why are you so focused on everyone else's feelings? You know, what do you want? And he, you know, for him, he's, he's very secure in that sense. He knows what he wants. And, um, uh, you know, INFPs and IS ISFPs are, are very much like that. Um, when they're under extreme stress, they'll become less patient, but usually ISFPs and INFPs are very patient because they understand the need for someone to be authentic and express all of their emotions. Um, so if they're in an, under a, a regular amount of stress, they'll allow someone to kind of walk over them. But when they, uh, 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 because they want someone to be able to express the full depth of their feelings and emotions. Um, but if they under, they come under extreme stress and someone's not respecting them or they fear that they're going to lose the relationship, um, that, that lock of that, that will cause them extreme stress. They'll become sarcastic and they'll be a little bit more direct. So, um, you know, INFP will say something like, you need to fix yourself. I don't want to deal with it. Or you should, uh, actually a better statement would probably be, uh, why do you care about what everyone else thinks? What do you want? Something like that. Just a very firm, very external, very like matter of fact kind of question or statement is what they will fall under when they're very stressed. Same for ISFP. Um, and uh, they'll say something more along the lines of like, you're the worst and I'm going to fix it. We can't fix this. Why do I even try? Why do I even exist? ISFPs will kind of start to go down a rabbit hole because they want to, they're going to be a little bit more practical and they're going to be trying to find you know, they're going to find something that they can do to try to fix it. Whereas INFPs are going to be thinking about the future and the intuitiveness. Like, what do you want years from now? ISFPs are going to go with the approach of like, what can we do now to fix this? So um, those are ISFP and INFP. The next is ISFJ and ISTJ, which are going to be very similar, but but different in different ways also. This is another type that I'm very familiar with. My ex-wife is an INF ISFJ. And I, I've also been with an ISTJ in the past. So I'm very familiar with both types <laughs> and uh, I can speak to a little bit of how that's been stressful for me in my past. Um, but their inferior is NE, extroverted intuition. Uh, they are led by introverted sensing and um, they have very firm values. They, based on their, their, their past, their individual past, their own traditions, the things that they've grown up with, the things that they, they love. And, you know, a lot of STJ types or ISFJ types will you know do the same thing every year. They'll do a lot of traditional things. They'll do the same thing for Christmas. They'll do the same thing for every holiday. Um, they really, really love, um, predictable behavior, um, basically. And their extroverted intuition, and you're seeing a pattern here is pretty much the opposite of that. And, you know, it's all about balance. So they need to be able to Think about it that way. Uh, I'm gonna raise my desk a little bit because <laughs> the camera, oh no. Okay, we're back. Whoa, that was a disaster. <laughs> so for those of you watching on the video, I was gonna go like to raise my desk. So because like the camera's sitting on my desk and uh, I was raising the, uh, the desk, which is like a hand crank thing and um, the camera fell and then it knocked my water over and then there was water all over the floor. And luckily this morning, I just moved my PC from right away 
from where the water spot was. So, whew, that was danger. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because like immediately afterwards I had an FE reaction where I was just like, fuck. <laughs> this is like just external whininess and ah, damn it. Now I got to deal with this. So it was pretty funny. Anyway, back to... <laughs> Uh, back to ISFJ and I ISTJ. Uh, what the hell was I saying? I was talking about how uh, ISTJ and ISFJs are SI dominance. So introverted sensing is their dominant function. They're very traditional. They're very focused on their, um, you know, their perception of traditional, what uh, they've been doing since they were a kid, you know, family based things. They're very family focused. Um, what do they uh, they love to do like traditional things and 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 do the same thing every year so their inferior which is ne is basically the opposite it's extroverted intuition which is uh, often codenamed exploration and trying new things doing unexpected things taking risks that sort of thing and it's very opposite from what the isfj or istj does isfj is well both types basically their statement would probably be like that's just the way it is or, um, uh, but when they're stressed, you know, an ISFJ will be a little bit more like the cliche, yeah, do whatever you want, but not actually mean that. And then the ISTJ will say like, whatever, let's just go with it. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe it'll fix itself. I don't know. What do I know? You know, be more sarcastic in that sense. Um, so for these types, they'll have unexpected behavior, breaking from role expectations, not meeting expectations. They'll, um, they can be emotionally triggered in a variety of ways such as being contradicted by someone who is not in touch with factual details, being reminded about past mistakes or embarrassments, making repeated mistakes, hearing suggestions about implementing unnecessary changes for the future, dealing with people who are deemed impractical or unreliable, lack of follow through from others, feeling unappreciated uh, for their hard work or responsible nature, being criticized for being inflexible, being interrupted, being forced to deviate from plans or routines without warning are things that cause them stress as well. Being focused to, um, being forced to confront completely unknown new situations, chaotic, noisy, disorganized environments, situations where there are no rules or where the rules are infrequently changed or frequently changed rather, uh, having to improvise or brainstorm without warning, being overwhelmed by responsibility, yet unwilling to delegate or relinquish control over those details, uh, or feeling pressured to extrovert too much. Uh, so they tend to lose self-discipline and become easily swayed by whatever intuitive possibilities appear to them, sometimes overindulging their impulses and chasing after hopeful or happy opportunities that end up dangerous in, in that put them in dangerous or unhealthy situations. Um, they might alternate between erratically uh, being social and overindulging. So let me see if I can just zoom in here because it's really small for my dumb eyes. <laughs> uh, they might alternate erratically between sociability and withdrawal, easily lose patience, indulge in anger or cynicism. They'll feel scattered and indecisive and um, they'll feel paralyzed by inaction or lack of progress. Their natural attentiveness to detail will, can give way to clumsiness and mishandling of factual data, resulting in more mistakes or errors. This can push them into catastrophizing, catast catastrophizing, that's a word, or imagining only negative possibilities and seeing warning or danger signs everywhere around them. They might become incredibly fearful of, of, of future outcomes and feel overwhelmed by dread, anxiety, and pessimism. As a result, they might act unpredictably with flashes of irrational hopefulness about changing their life and feel a desperate urgency to take action in solving problems, but end up being hasty, deploying wildly unrealistic, unpractical solutions that result in failure. So, you know, for ISTJs and ISFJ types, they need to take charge of their life a little bit more because if they let things happen, essentially, you know, it, it becomes erratic and out of control in a way that they don't know how to handle. You know, there are types like ENFP or is the the opposite. ENFP and ESFP are very intuitive, uh, uh, or rather ENFP and uh, uh, ENTP are, uh, uh, they lead with extroverted intuition and they are types that need to put themselves out there constantly to collect new information to make judgments about where to go in the future. Um, if they were in practical situations like an ISFJ would really like, 
you know, they would fall apart. They just would not know what to do with themselves. So that's why, like, there's no one way to live life, but the world is pretty much filled with ISFJ and ISTJ types. When you hear a lot about, like, falling in line and what you should do or shouldn't do, that's usually an ISFJ or ISTJ sort of thing. So now we're going to move on to ENTJ and ESTJ. I admittedly don't know a lot about ESTJ, so I kind of pulled a catch-all sort of um, explanation, but I know a lot about an ENTJ. I was also was previously with an ENTJ, um, and they have a certain vibe about them. I, I hope to have a video in the future where I can explain the different vibes that I have for each type because I'm starting to learn all of the little nuances of types, and I can literally pick out uh, um, a, a type based on how they speak or how they they move their eyes or their head or whatever. It's it's actually really interesting. So I'm trying to like slowly parcel of that so that I can better explain that to you in a future video. But ENTJs, um, they're very, you know, ENTJs and ESTJs are very militaristic. They're very, they want to um, push things forward. I need to remember what the, the dominant ENTJ cognitive functions, I believe they're TE dominance. Yes, they're TE dominance and their inferior is, is introverted feeling. So they're very much about extroverted thinking. They're very sassy. They're very, <laughs> they're very witty. Uh, they have a lot of sarcasm, but a very well-developed sarcasm that is not necessarily mean, you know, ENTJs can be very sweet, um, but they are very no nonsense. Um, same things with ESTJs. Um, just the, really the difference is ENTJs are more adept to think about future plans, whereas ESTJs are like concerned about executing day to day. So um, with the FI inferior, basically ENTJs and ESTJs are not very emotionally, uh, um, they're not very emotionally expressive. You know, Gary Vee, for example, is an ENTJ and he's, he's not an emotional guy, but he understands some aspects of emotions and usually he works through his emotions on his own but entjs are types that are not they're not types that need to be alone so you know to take the time to be alone is not something that's natural to them so uh some things that stress them out is uh having their deeply held values disregarded or ignored ignored being discounted dismissed underestimated by others being accused of being cold selfish and sensitive uncaring experiencing remorse about having been unnecessarily harsh with someone important to them, strong emotional displays from loved ones, emotional displays that seem irrelevant to the issues at hand, working with people who seem incompetent or illogical or uncooperative, being confronted with interpersonal conflicts that are perceived as petty or baseless, disorganized environments with poorly defined roles, or where rules and standards are continually shifted, shifting unpredictably, uh, seeing people exacerbate problems with their obviously pro problematic behaviors, criticism that is unfair or perceived as a personal attack, lack of intangible, lack of tangible achievements or progress despite one's efforts, too much flexibility in the benchmarks that are used for measuring progress slash success, feeling excluded from decision making or having no control over situations where the outcome is extremely important. You know, ENTJs, they like control. They like being the leader. They like, um, you know, they, they often feel like they're the smartest person in the room. <laughs> you know, they, they often feel like they've got it figured out. They are the exemplification of uh, a quote unquote common sense. You know, they, they think that everyone should know how to behave and know which rules to follow um, and are stressed out when people don't do that um, because it's, it's so natural to them. They don't understand why other people can't do that, too. They detest incompetence. They will make fun of incompetence uh, uh, with sarcasm. They're very, um, they can be, they become very emotional. Um, actually, I should, I should stop. And um, basically when they're in their inferior function, when they're very stressed out, they, they detest incompetence. They will make fun of incompetence with sarcasm. They become very emotional, um, but they don't, they show it externally, but they're still trying to be, be their dominant, domineering self. They start believing others hate them due to insignificant details. They become insensitive to criticism, but hypersensitive about relationships. Uh, that's usually where the FI comes in. It's about people and relationships and how they feel about that. Uh, they, they don't want anyone to see them in such a sensitive state because, you know, the, the TJ aspect is about presenting themselves in a, in a way that's uh, controlled. And um, they avo avoid emotional conversations, withdraw from others, and uh, show impatience, and they need to do something to avoid a sense of failure. Um, 
So they tend to succumb to their own inner turmoil and lose self-confidence. They want to preserve or, uh, um, they want to per persevere in confronting their problems, but suddenly feeling too insecure or tired to proceed. You know, they're so used to going, going, going that when they have to stop, and the key is when they have to stop because they're stressed, they don't know how to do that. They might feel inexplicably fatigued or withdrawn or depressed or unproductive. They'll feel unable to take effective action, feel unable to analyze situations logically, overanalyze situations, but with no conclusion or result. They'll feel powerless or out of control, procrastinate or fail to meet important deadlines. They'll lose the ability to verbalize their thoughts clearly, become too rash or absolute in their judgments or situations, etc. Being accustomed to maintaining composure via suppressing the private emotions, they will find it difficult to comprehend the eruption of those emotions in unconscious into consciousness, becoming hypersensitive to them and feeling consumed by them. They'll kind of be attacked. They'll feel attacked by their own emotions, essentially. They tend to feel easily hurt by criticism, undervalued, underappreciated, unappreciated, disrespected, or used by others, even perceiving themselves as a martyr or a victim, uncharacteristically wallowing in self-pity. And again, this is something that because these types are so dominant in their thinking and judging externally that they don't take time deliberately, naturally at least, to process their emotions. And somebody who is a healthy ENTJ or a ESTJ uh, takes time to work through those emotions. They give themselves, you know, the occasional alone time to 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 learn how they feel and make sure that they are checking in with themselves um, as often as they can so that when they are met with this situation, they can feel at least a little bit more in control. Again, these things kind of come out as like a, like the floodgates burst, basically. That's how this looks like or how this feels for them or really how it feels for any type who is suppressing their, their introverted um, or their, their inferior function. The, uh, Second to last, um, or third to last rather here, we've got ENFP and ENTP, who both lead with extroverted intuition, which is uh, often codename exploration uh, by Personality Hacker. And they will be the types that need to go out into the world and they're very novelty focused. They're very much doing new things and loving new things. Um, introverted sensing is their inferior function, which is about tradition and rules and doing the same thing all the time and safety, basically. Um, so when they become stressed out, they revert to uh, a measure of safety or a measure of their previous life, you know, their, when they were younger. And um, introverted sensing, they start to, um, they, they actually kind of drive themselves into stress a lot of the time, which is interesting. You know, they start overthinking and empathizing with difficulties, with the difficulties of the world. Um, they start wondering why people are the way they are and, um, you know, in ways that there are things that they can't fix, you know, just kind of stuff that is out there. And it's just like, it's a feeling of hopelessness. You know, they're not very organized or detailed focused. So jumping from project to project will catch up and add stress to their lives if they can't keep up with it. They tend to help people, but giving too much can lead to stress as well. So they have to take time to make sure that they are you know, taking time to, to use their secondary function, introverted feeling, to, to take time to stop and breathe and feel. Um, they reject new ideas and can become critical of others um, when they become stressed. They start losing control, difficult time communicating. They become obsessive. Uh, depression sets in. They become oversensitive and irritable. They may become excessive with cleanliness and self-care. They attempt to become more detailed and orderly and um, when they're, and they just start getting more and more overwhelmed. They're unable to sort priorities. They start to feel like there are limited possibilities or no way out of the situation that they're in. Um, and they become intensely bodily aware. You know, they start to feel a sense of hypochondria. They start to feel things that are possibly not there because introverted sensing is about how you feel internally as well. And usually how a lot of ENTPs or ENFPs tend to uh, nurture that is through like meditation and you know, introverted feeling tactics like that for ENFPs, at least for introverted, for ENTPs, it's about introverted thinking. Um, so they need time to do a little bit of research or do things that kind of nurture their thinking in their brain. Um, so the phrase for an ENFP would be closer to the lines of like, fuck that. <laughs> um, and they just don't want to No, I just don't want to do that. Fuck that. Fuck everything. Go away. Um, and then for ENTPs, you know, during stress, they lose their can do attitude. They're feeling inadequate. They, um, 
uh, feeling inadequate causes stress for them. They feel uh, anxiety. They start pacing around. They are usually unusually quiet. Um, they may notice bodily changes and, and become have a, a sense of a hypochondria. Um, I didn't have a phrase for ENTP, and I don't think I had a phrase for ENTJ as well. Um, but ENTJ would probably be something along the lines of like, "Come on, you're taking forever." You know how I or, or something like, um, uh, "I think of the Devil Wears Prada." Glenn Close's character uh, is definitely an ENTJ. And at the part where she's like crying and freaking out, um, she's still being an ENTJ and her, the assistant, uh, played by, I can't remember her name, um, is going too slow. So the ENTJ, Glenn Close, is saying something along the lines of, um, yeah, uh, yeah, just go ahead and take your time. You know how much I love that. <laughs> something like that. Um, so for ENFPs, that would be fuck that and ENTP and ENTPs. What would a phrase for ENTP be? Um, it's probably like a Woody Allen thing, like, uh, uh, something sarcastic. Um, I, I can't think of it. I'll have to come back to that. <laughs> um, but, uh, ENFJs are the next group ENFJ and ESTJ. These two are, uh, extroverted feeling types. They are harmony focused. They want to fit in socially. They want to make sure everyone is getting along. Um, there can sometimes be a sense of control with that, but it's subconscious. You know, they just know how to navigate social situations really well. And the opposite of that is introverted thinking, which is my dominant because we're not very good at being social. Um, and uh, for extroverted feelers, they kind of need to be out in the world. They need to be in in, in multiple social situations, they need to feel like they have some sense of control of their circles of society. Uh, stressors for them are uh, a lack of appreciation and won't accept help when stressed out. Their repression of feelings for the sake of others results in cold responses. Uh, genuine emotions come out and will withdraw to self-criticize. Um, they'll become obsessed with mistakes and flaws that they make. They'll try to rationalize a reason for their stress with whatever they can grasp, which is the TI trying to convince them that their stress is, is logical. Um, but it's really about not being able to express their emotions to people because they're trying to maintain a sense of harmony. They'll also lack a, um, they'll find a lack of harmony stressful. So if you're out arguing in public, uh, and somebody yells, they'll be like, Hey, you're disturbing the neighborhood. They'll almost be upset about the disturbing of the neighborhood than about the person yelling. Like if you were in per in a, in a quiet place where nobody could hear you yelling, they probably wouldn't be as upset about that. <laughs> um, uh, confrontation is also stressful. People not living up to their expectations can cause, uh, can also cause stress. Um, they want the best for people. And if that realization is missed, it also causes stress. So, you know, FE types, um, the harmony focus types, the extroverted feelers can often have their intentions misinterpreted as control. And sometimes it is that without realizing it. And sometimes, you know, so, so it really depends, you know, they, they see people and they know what their, um, they often know what their, their potential is. And if they don't live up to that expectation, that causes stress for them and they don't let it, like unexpected changes either. So, um, the phrase that they would use is I want you to be happy and you're making that difficult. And, um, you know, ESTJs would have something a little bit more, um, a little bit more focused on in the moment. You know, ENFJs, like I said, is about like someone's potential and disrupting harmony where ESTJs would be probably a little bit more focused on, you know, the way the world is and why aren't you trying to get to the next level and maybe being a little bit more straightforward as opposed to trying to hide uh, for the sake of people. They're really focused a little bit more on themselves um, uh, within the within the structure. Um, and ESTJs typically are seen as the types that want to immediately ascend to the top. <laughs> uh, Dwight Schrute from the office is very much an ESTJ. He is a quintessential ESTJ. They just know things. They're very certain about things. They're very, they, they're kind of easily manipulated because they, uh, they, they, they uh, are, you know, the fact that Jim is able to make play a lot of jokes on him is, is true to that type because they just kind of want to fit in and, and really appreciate the group, but they kind of express it in more crude, straightforward terms. And then the last group is ESTP and ESFP. 
these two pairs are probably the ones I've done the least research on, but I've experienced personally. So uh, I'll kind of share what I have and hopefully um, that'll help. But uh, ESFPs, for example, so ESTP and EF e ESFP, they are, they lead with extroverted sensing, I believe. Let me double check that real quick. Let's see, ESFP. Let's go to images, because that usually shows you. Yes, they lead with SE, so extroverted sensing. You know, they're very much like about the way things are, the way the world is, the way that things are supposed to be. <laughs> uh, and they often take good care of themselves. They're, um, and, uh, you know, have some interesting insights as to how to approach the world. Um, and that's because their introverted intuition allows them to, or rather doesn't allow them to collect a lot of the subtleties in people's intentions. Uh, so they kind of miss a lot. They miss a lot in that sense. So they have to like physically go do things to understand things. They're more experienced people. You know, they, they like to experience things and not necessarily go out and talk to someone and understand them based on the nuances of their conversation, but take things a little bit more at face value. Um, so the introverted intuition, which is their inferior function, um, you know, allows them to be stressed out by rigid rules and being put in the idea of being put in a box. You know, they want to be able to, you know, explore and experience the world. Um, they'll throw back, uh, uh, they'll throw back the stress that they're receiving from someone by trying to be annoying to create that stress for the stressor. Uh, you know, they'll just throw it back at them. Uh, commitments and plans can cause stress and uh, dramatic and immature loud responses to stress are what comes out of them. And uh, so to stress and rules, they become dramatic and immature and just very like loud, annoying responses. Um, they'll struggle with interpretation or people's intentions when they're under extreme stress. Uh, they'll, and they're more likely to They'll kind of withdraw while someone is talking and they'll be like kind of susceptible to manipulation in that sense, but they'll kind of have an outburst afterwards of dramatic foretelling and assumptions of someone's intentions because it's, they, they just, their intuition is not very strong. So they just can't really tell what someone is intending to do based on their actions. Um, and they're only revert, re reverting to what they know or what they know about the world. So they'll do a dramatic foretelling and assumption and, and be very assumptive and they'll see hidden meetings and things that aren't quite there. So they'll, they'll make a lot of judgments or assumptions or very loose connections to things. And, um, you know, when they're under that extreme stress, it's just not a trait that is, uh, uh very strong in these types. So, you know, what they need to do is go out and experience things, you know, probably the best, um, sort of advice I would give is to just practice a little bit more patience with people uh, and, and try not to act out uh, in a response to things and to check your own intuition. Cause I've, I've heard, you know, ESTPs are interesting in the sense that they have um, extroverted. I think they have extroverted thinking. Yes. Uh, um, let me double check that, but they have a uh, very strong thinking ability but uh, yeah, introverted thinking is their second, um, their secondary function. So for ESTPs, they can kind of come up with some logical reasonings for some strange intuitions. Um, you know, you'll find an ESTP more likely to come up with a kind of a, a bold or dark solution for an idea or something that um, is just kind of messed up. <laughs> but they can convince themselves that it's something that is... It, 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 it's something that we should do. You know, they're more likely to be the, the type to say like Hitler was right, I think, or something like that <laughs> and then come up with some rationalization for that. Um, but because the inter the intuition is not there to like, tell them this is a bad idea. They kind of just continue down the rabbit hole. So, um, basically for all of these types. So that was the last, but basically for all of these types, the way that you can, nurture your inferior function is to actually improve the first two functions uh, and, and really the secondary function that you have um, based on your type. And that's something I could do a separate video on is, is specific ways that you can improve and nurture your secondary function. Um, 
because improving that will allow for the dominant function to not necessarily always take over or for the inferior function to shut down everything else because that's really what's happening when the inferior function takes over as a result of extreme stress it's shutting everything else down and you're reacting in a pure energy kind of way you know you're expressing your your opposite type in a very uh, expressive or uh, a way that is out of character for all of these types it's you know it, it kind of brings up that concept of the shadow types and that's why that exists because we are literally becoming the opposite version of ourselves but expressing the negative side of that opposite you know the opposite it doesn't mean the opposite of us is bad it means that there's a negative to the opposite <laughs> you know what i mean the um so uh, introverted thinking, for example, for INTPs, there is a superpower in it when you know how to harness it and you've been practicing it and it's very natural to you. But if you're not natural to it, an ENFJ, for example, will become will succumb to the negative aspects of it and be overwhelmed by it. I kind of think of it as like the symbiote washing over you in Spider-Man um, when Venom takes over. You know, you're not having any control and you become a complete opposite of who you are. Um, so it's, it's something like that. So that kind of covers all of the inferior functions for each type. Um, let me know. I know there were some inconsistencies because I, I had a lot of inf information for some and not for others. So if there were things that you were missing or things you would like to know information about for a certain type, um, more likely than not, intuitive types are ones that are listening to my show. So if I didn't cover that or you want to know information about a specific type, you can uh, uh, leave me a message anywhere that on the internet um that i'm that you can find me at rival my design on all social channels uh or give me a call in on anchor or leave a comment on this video on on youtube or facebook and um we can talk more about that and i'm also doing um myers-briggs consulting so i'm doing free first consulting sessions for the next two weeks that is until um probably the second the probably the second week in june uh, probably let's see yeah, probably around the 8th of June, um, next Friday, not, not, uh, the following Friday, rather, June 8th. Um, that will be the last time I'll be doing a free initial consulting session, which is in 45 minutes to an hour of just telling you all about your type, um, what you need to know and how that pertains to your personal, uh, to your life. And from there, we can talk about all those specifics. And then I'll just kind of, uh, so after those two weeks, the session will have a price to it. And, um, you know, it'll just be a little bit harder to get going. So, uh, with that, that's everything that I know about the inferior functions for each type at the moment. Um, again, best way to get better is just to nurture your, your dominant and secondary functions and the other ones will just kind of come with it. So I hope you guys are going to have a good weekend. Um, well, I'm recording this on Saturday, actually. This is going to go up on Monday. So I hope you guys have a good week. I hope you take care of yourselves and each other. This is on, I think this is going up Memorial Day. So happy Mor Memorial Day. Um, you know, uh, remember all of the the good things about how we got here. And um, yeah, that's it. So I love you guys. Take care of yourselves and each other. Peace. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and or listening. If you thought this was a dope show, but wait until next week because it's always going to get better. That's kind of the point, isn't it? <laughs> and if you would like, please go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts and please leave us a positive review. Or, you know, if you have a problem, let me know and I'll try to fix it too. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube as well, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit all the comments, all that good stuff. We appreciate the love. We appreciate you guys. And, um, you know, we're going to keep doing it for you and do the best we can. So thanks for listening. Go to HowMyNameIsChristian.com or Dopamine.life. Check us out or CNote.media to learn how to make your own podcast and videos and go from there. So catch you guys later. <laughs>